The Three Monsters of Investing, brought to you by Constructum Online Learning. The goal of any investment is to generate a real return, to grow the value of an investment portfolio, not only in monetary terms, but in real terms. To achieve a real return, the investor must fight against the three monsters of investing. The cost of investing, inflation and taxes. Your success as an investor and by implication an entrepreneur depends on understanding the nature and the effect of these three monsters. As an amateur cyclist residing in the east of Pretoria, I am very much acquainted with the hills around our area. It's much easier to go downhill than uphill. The same principle applies to an investment portfolio. Let's imagine you have an investment portfolio valued at 100 Rand. Now, if for some reason your portfolio loses 20% of its value, you will end up with 80 Rand. Here's a question for you. By what percentage must your investment portfolio now at 80 Rand grow for you to return to a portfolio of 100 Rand? Remember, you lost 20% to get to 80 Rand. What percentage of growth do you need on 80 Rand to get back to 100 Rand? You need 25% or 20 over 80 to get back to 100 Rand. 20% down requires 25% up just to get back to even. The three monsters of investing threaten to push the real value of your portfolio down. You must climb the hill back to even before standing any chance of achieving a real return on investment. The cost of investing. The first monster you must deal with is the cost of an investment, which may be upfront or ongoing. Costs reduce the value of your investment. You need to first climb the hill back to even before the investment starts to benefit you. Consider an investment in a residential property. You must pay estate agent commissions, transfer duties, legal costs, and if you decide to occupy the property yourself, you need to consider moving costs. Not to say anything about the alterations your wife wants to make to the bathrooms and kitchen. And then there are the ongoing costs of maintenance, insurance, utilities and rates and taxes. All these costs weigh heavily on the eventual investment return that you one day hope to realize when you sell the property. You might argue that investing in a business related to the topic of this book comes with no cost, but that's not true. Let me explain. Most small businesses start out with little capital. The entrepreneur invests mostly time and effort to build the business. However, the day comes when he, the entrepreneur, wants to exit the business by convincing another party to invest their capital in the business. By investing in the new business, the other party incurs at the very least an opportunity cost, but likely also costs related to divesting capital from their current investment an opportunity cost in that the investor must forego any investment return that the capital currently generates. Capital may be currently invested in the bank earning interest. The new investor needs to climb the hill 
of recouping their costs before any opportunity arises to make a real return on investment by investing in your business. There are no free lunches in the world of investing. Inflation. The next monster is inflation. There's a common misconception amongst investors that the rate of inflation refers to rising prices. The rate of inflation refers to the pace at which prices increase, not the phenomenon of increasing prices. It's important to understand the difference because an investor needs their portfolio to increase in value at a faster pace than inflation to ensure a real return on investment. At the coalface, a real return on investment means that the investor can buy more stuff with their money than before. The purchasing power of their capital must increase. Central banks in most modern economies employ monetary policies aimed at targeting inflation. It's not that central banks want to bring their rate of inflation to zero. On the contrary, a certain level of inflation is needed for economic growth. Deflation, falling prices, is much worse and inevitably results in economic failure. In any growing economy, inflation is part of the landscape. To successfully sell a business, the entrepreneur must present an argument in support of an inflation-beating return. Taxes The saying goes that death and taxes are the only certainties in life. Individuals pay tax on income earned. The same individuals are then taxed again in the form of value-added tax when spending the already taxed money on consumer goods. When an individual buys property, transfer duty is levied on the transaction. And when an individual sells an investment that produces a capital gain, The proceeds are subject to capital gains tax. Even giving your money away may be subject to donations tax. And then, when you die, your estate may be subject to taxation. And this is not an exhaustive list of all the taxes that may be levied on an individual taxpayer. Businesses are in very much the same position, being taxed on profits and capital gains. But the business may also be subject to taxation on certain transactions. Either value-added tax or transfer duty will apply to commercial property transactions. There are a host of different taxes applicable to businesses and business transactions. The effect of taxation on investment returns can be profound. Understanding the effect of taxes from both a personal financial planning and a business perspective is essential for an investor. Conclusion, an investor and by implication an entrepreneur must understand how investment costs, inflation and taxation affect investment performance. Thank you for listening to this presentation brought to you by Constructum Online Learning.